computer. Stop. <laughs> how do I un how do I undo that? Part and are we broadcasting on YouTube? Are we gonna just post it later? You we did. Not have, you did no. not have permission to live stream. Why is that? It hmm. says I'm connected. Hmm. Hmm. We can always post it later, I guess. All right, for the sake of time, we'll keep going and then I'll just post it later if we have to. Um, Lisa, you went through roll call. You see everyone is on the phone. Okay. Um, agenda. I want you to have gotten the agenda in your email. Anyone want to make any changes? Comments? If not, take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ken. Um, all in favor, please give me a thumbs up with your emoji. Okay. And there's no thumbs down. No one's abstaining. She carries. All right. Um, minutes. You shall have gotten a copy of our December 13th minutes. Has everyone had time to review them? Any comments, changes, edits? No, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as typed up. Thanks, Matt. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ken. All in favor, thumbs up. John Post, you voting? There we go. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Anyone opposing? No, no one's abstaining. Motion carries. All right. Uh, any public comments? No, we need some bills. Submissions. Okay. Um, so happy new year, everyone. We are yeah. entering our third year together. If I can't believe it, I know. Oh. I have to keep going back. I'm like, is it really our third year or fourth year? It feels like our fifth year, but no, this is our third year together. Um, and this is going to be probably the most exciting of our third years, possibly, with um, everything going into motion next month. I'm very, very excited. I feel like a little giddy kid. I can't wait to see stuff happening on the fields and dirt getting pushed around and beams going up. It's going to be very exciting. Um, there's a lot, obviously, ahead of us this year. Um, I feel like, I kind of feel like a lot of our hard decisions were made, but... I don't know. There's probably a lot more ahead of us as well. Mm. Um, just a reminder for all of us to keep our focus on the students. This is what we're building the building for. We're building it for the students, for the curriculum, for the ed spec, for the faculty and the staff. So just keep on that focus, tune out all the noise, and we will get this building built. Um, as far as updates, trying to think since December 13th. Um, so a couple things. Um, the biggest thing that's kind of happened is, uh, and you're all probably aware of it. Um, so we had some discussions with the town regarding the um, bioretention area, uh, the fencing around the bioretention area. Um, and with um, there's some miscommunication um, that went on um, with, with, I'll just leave it at that, some miscommunication that really resulted in our inability to progress with our agreed or voted on option of that timber rail around the buyer retention area. Um, so right now as it stands, um, our current um, COPE RFQ details out that four foot chain link fence. We did instruct um, Newfield to look into, gosh, now I forgot. Was it a four foot wooden fence, Tom? What was the other option that I had you go in COPE? Uh, a wood fence and a metal picket fence. 
Right. Yeah, the, the, the wood fence, fence had three rails on it. Right. Yeah, three rails on the wood fence, correct. Right. So it would be taller. Rosanna, can someone check to see if Claudio's in the waiting room? He he is not. Okay, he's trying to get in, so just keep an eye on. <laughs> Thanks, sorry. It's okay. So it's taller than the um timber rail, which I think was like a couple feet off the ground. Um but obviously it's not a six foot fence. So there's still a lot of confusion around what's allowed, what's not allowed. Um, Jack did talk to the state, remind everyone, did talk to the state about their policy as far as the type of retention required and they just require a barrier. They were okay with the timber rail option. So there's no state regulation that says we could not use it. Um, we also had multiple um, examples across the state at other educational facilities where they use something similar to timber rail or nothing at all to retain their bioretention areas or to surround their bioretention areas, I should say. So there's still a lot of confusion as to, you know, you know, what are the rules, what are the guidelines, what are the best practices, but um, all of that is kind of a moot point at this point. Um, mainly because uh, of some communications that I'm with the town um, and we are kind of left with the inability to really challenge it. So what we're left with is the um, build up, bid alternate options that Tom just talked about using that um, three rail, like kind of think of it as like a picket, not a picket fence, like a, I think I showed a picture mm -hmm. of it. I think, um, was it Colchester? Someone, one other town had it. It's like a three. Uh, Seymour Middle School had it. Like a split rail. Oh, yeah, yeah, split uh, rail. Also designed by Richter and Segan. Well, hmm. Also designed by Richter and Segan, yes. Um, thank you, Ken. So um, that's where we are with that. Um, other things we are presenting to the town council uh, next Wednesday. Um, Stacy's on. Stacy's new to the town council. Welcome, Stacy. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, so, because the town council is at least half, fifty percent new people, um, it is it is in our best interest and their best interest that we present the project to them again from start to finish so they know what how we got to the point we are today. I think it's really important to kind of walk through them, walk through with them um, the history because there's a lot of history and where our plans are moving forward as well and answer their questions. So um, not everyone has to come. This is not, we're not asking for approvals or anything. So I think uh, I, I think I can handle a lot of the questions, but if you would like to attend or you'd like to support that meeting, feel free. It'll be 7 p.m. on the 10th, which is next Wednesday at the town hall. Um, as far as presentation materials, I think we're just going to pull from the presentation materials we have already. So we have a couple of presentations. We can go back and pull the original Tecton presentation. We can pull the Perkins presentations and um, just kind of go with where we started, where we are, and where we're going, um, and then answer the questions that they may have. Hey, um, Rosie, the yes. one you come to present next week, sure. if you need anything specific from us, any specific support, participation, guidance, could you just kind of um, come with your specific ask, like if you need anything from us or, you know, or some ideas of what you might need, um, because obviously we have these on supporting um, different boards and committees and we're trying to hash out those roles and we want to um, be able to best support um, all, everyone as much as we're able. Um, so if there's anything specific you need, please just, you know, keep that in mind when you present. All right. Thanks, Stacey. I, I do think something that I've been talking to, um, James about is really the need for a standing building committee in town. Um, because I think we have so much learning that this committee has gone through that to have a whole slew of people go through it all again and all those that learning and it's just, 
hurts my head. <laughs> so um, I think it'd be really important for the town to consider that. And that's probably one of the points I will be making next week as a suggestion. Well, I love standard work. You know that. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big fans. Um, okay, I think, I think that was it that I had to bring up. Um, let's see, what's next on our agenda? I think it's comms. Comms, Shannon. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. So, um, we will be preparing our newsletter to go out next week to all of our email subscribers. In addition to the town council presentation, we'll be presenting to the Board of Ed on January 23rd. Then we're continuing our social media updates and are continuing our groundbreaking um, plans. We're going to, um, we'll wait for the, the new field update, but if all schedules holding, then we'll be in a good position in the next week or so to kind of solidify a date and get all those logistics in place. So more to come on that. Thank you. Thank you. Heather. I have nothing um, from design. It's been quiet. Okay. Uh, no update on the interior stuff, right? No, nope, we haven't heard anything. Shannon, can I just interrupt? Shannon, you said uh, presenting to the BOE. What, what was that? Was that similar to the town council where it was just so? Yeah, it's going to be, stuff? there's not as many uh, new Board of Ed members, but yes, very similar, similar presentation, just bringing people up to speed again and giving okay. them the opportunity to ask questions. Okay. Yeah, if there's just uh, stock material, I, if you can copy me, I'll provide it to Board of Finance as well. Yeah, absolutely. That would One be great. or two new members there. Okay. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Heather. Do we, do we have a schedule for when we're go over the um all the graphics and branding? Nope. I have not heard um back from them since I asked them to go kind of back to the drawing board and come up with some new things. Um and I haven't heard anything. Okay. Yeah, Ken and Heather, we're we're been focusing on getting out to bid. So answering RFIs and responding to those. So we'll yeah. we'll pick it up after after we get bids in. And there's no like immediate rush for that, right, Joe? Uh shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely want to get all those RFIs um responded to. Actually, do you do you want to give an update on that since you're up next anyway? Sure. I believe we have as of the last time I looked at the log, responded to all of the RFIs um, that have been posted. Anything that was um, like surprising? Anyone ask anything surprising? Uh, there were some odd ones in there, but uh, nothing, nothing too surprising. Um, a lot of the standard ones, we always seem to get a lot of millwork questions from the mill work contractors, that's uh, usually are typically a, a lot of questions from the mill workers, so. And that's like details that are not spelled out in the drawings or is that like, like what's driving those questions? I'm just trying to understand the process. Um, yeah, Claire, usually um, a lot of them were clarifications between the drawings and the specifications on the mill work. Um, so that was, a. a a lot of the millwork questions and they a lot of repeat questions from the different mill workers um asked mm -hmm. in different ways so from, from different contractors okay um do you have anything else to update um spoke to slr i've been uh, keeping on them on the osta uh, application uh, so they had received comments, they've responded to the comments, and there was a couple of things that they had to confirm with uh, the town, with Stuart and the um, the LA, which uh, the, um, I forget what it stands for, basically the chief of police, um, for which they got those responses and then provided those to OSTA as well. So now we're waiting for OSTA to uh, uh, approve the application. Um, don't have a time frame for that once they've received the um, comments back and the responses. Does that hold up anything? Uh, it would hold up um, 
award of bid, uh, award of the project. Does it change anything with the bid process? No. So nothing, none of the questions that we're answering or anything like that would change any of that process. It's just we can't award a bid until right. we get we there. Need, we need that. It's basically, yeah, it's basically like having a permit. Okay. Is there any risk that they won't have that approved in time to award the bid? Uh, I can't answer that. I, I don't know how long it's going to take them. Um, but it's it, out of the town's hands. It's back it's, with them. Yeah, it's back with them. And they understand our timeline? Uh, I believe they do. I don't know if that factors into their speed of returning and of approval, though. Okay. Do they just handle school projects or do they handle like, any kind of building? Uh, everything. Everything. Yeah, it's so an office of the state traffic authority. Oh, okay. All right. Any other updates, Joe? Mm, nope. Uh, new field. So we have trailers. Okay, so um, on site, I don't know if you've been by in the last few days, but the trailer has been delivered. It's being assembled. Um, we're on the verge of getting temporary power to the trailer uh, and setting it up. That's what we'll be doing in the next couple of weeks. Um, bidding, as Joe mentioned, we are still dealing with uh, bidders RFIs. Uh, there's almost 500 RFIs that came in that have just about all been responded to. Wow. Um, we're still on schedule to bid on January 9th, to collect the bids on January 9th. Um, then we'll be doing our scope review. So at the ne at your next meeting, we will have definitely have bid results, but probably not um, recommendations for award yet. And we need time to scope all, all the trade contractors that bid or all the, all the low bids. Um, and that's it. The, the mobilization date remains right now as, as February 15th. Tom, I have a question. Is 500 RFIs normal for a project of this size? I was just going to ask that question, Jack. Oh, no, it's a lot. It's it's more than normal. What's driving all of that, yeah. that number then? Like what's going on? Um, just, you know, people looking for clarifications, you know, things that might not be quite clear on the drawings or things that might be missing and, you know, they want to know what they should assume. I mean, um, it's been a difficult um, few weeks here trying to deal with all these RFIs, but better that they ask the questions now than, you know, than they don't ask or, or we get into an argument later. How many do you typically see on a project this size? Um... Probably, you know, 200 or less. Wow. So double. Hmm. Okay. What, um, what, so what trades are primarily asking the RFIs? Oh, it's it's all of them. Like Joe said, there are a lot of millwork questions, um, pretty detailed questions on the millwork. Um, you know, some site, a lot of site questions, uh, steel questions, um, finishes, you know, electrical, mechanical, that, you know, four or five contractors asked a bunch of questions. So it's really, it really pretty much across the whole spectrum. Tom, can you just clarify when you say mill work questions, what does that entail besides like cabinets and, and trim and what, what else does that entail? That's it. It's that's just it, the, basically. Yeah. Wow. And that's most of them. Well, no, it's not most of them, but it's a lot of them. I mean, they get okay. into these little details, like, you know, what kind of hinge do you want? And, you know, I please see. confirm this and those types of questions. Well, thank you for working hard, um, getting those responded. I know it's like over the holiday break. It must have been crazy. And I, I appreciate all the effort you guys have been putting into that, getting those through as quickly as possible. Um. February 15th is open house at the middle school. No, February 15th is what? I can't read my color coding here. February 15th. It's a half day. Oh, it's a half day. And then they have three. Oh, and then they have four days off. Yeah. Okay. All right. Actually worked out pretty well. You don't have, um, you don't have kids in the way for those first few days. At least. 
<clears throat> All right. Any other updates, Tom, for me? No, that's it. Okay. Um, Jack. All right. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> we have no uh, financial update today. It's too close to the end of month, end of quarter, end of year. Uh, so we'll we'll be reporting on that at the uh, uh, the next meeting. Uh, as far as invoices, I've only got one invoice, and that's my own. Uh, so if you want to act on that, that's great. If not, we can wait two weeks to the next. I do want to share my screen so that we can talk about the special inspector, mm -hmm. which we spoke about in the past. Uh, okay, special inspector is a uh, um, requirement of the building code. It's somebody who is responsible for uh, basically double checking what the inspection and testing lab is doing, as well as performing some other uh, incremental reporting and, and reviews along the project uh, construction timeline. Uh, we recently hired the inspection and testing lab. Uh, we need the we need to identify the special inspector as one of the uh, data points on our building permit application. So this is this is timely. And uh, we discussed you know, how best to procure this consultant. Uh, and we're, the intention here is to run it through us as another consultant, just like we did the plan reviewer, et cetera. Uh, the respondent that we had, we reached out to three firms, uh, including the structural engineer of record. We got two responses. Uh, the most competitive was uh, Susac, Kilty, and Fleur. They also provided the structural review for our threshold building uh, requirements. So they're already familiar with the project. Uh, the intent is to run this as an hourly assignment. So you're only paying for what you use. Uh, they've set a, an initial uh, estimate of 84 hours in order to perform this work. Uh, their hourly rate is 165 for a, a licensed engineer to be doing this work with a 10% markup for Arcadis that brings us to 181.50. 84 hours would give us an initial budget amount of just over 15,000, 15,246. Um, so we're proposing that we create um, an increase to Arcadis's purchase order in that amount. If that if the effort were to exceed that, we would have some notice on that and we could return to you for another increase, just as we discussed with the testing lab. Uh, we have some assumed budget values you know, for that. We have an initial purchase order value for the testing lab. This would be the essentially the testing, the, the purchase order starting value for the special inspector. Uh, but again, as an hourly rate project, this includes all expenses and it would be uh, build on a monthly basis during the, the period of construction that has structural activities going on. And uh, again, it, as hourly, you don't use it if you don't you don't pay for it if you don't use it. And we'll we'll track we'll track the hours on our as a separate uh, task line on our monthly invoices. And Jack, you're saying this is or is not part of our current budget? Uh, we haven't, you know. Other professional expenses cost. I, I can't pull up the uh, uh, the but the budget document right now. Uh, we generally do have some you know, miscellaneous consultants costs covered in the in the master budget. If not, this would be a, a small bite from the owner's contingency. And before the end of the meeting, I'll look that up and and verify that for you. Okay, so today you need us to approve the total amount of fifteen thousand two hundred forty-six dollars to our to um Arcadis to to retain the special inspector. Retain the special inspector. Hey, Tom, I have a or Jack, I have a question. It says during structural activity, is that just like through steel, and then that's pretty much done? Foundations, steel, and then they basically disappear into the sunset. 
there which are some is other different than the material testing. Yes, there are some um, some responsibilities that uh, are we believe had been double double dipped or, or or anticipated by the proposal we got from the structural engineer of record. Um, even though we shared with them who the testing lab was, that there was some scope that was captured in their proposal, which seems to have duplicated what the the lab was already going to do with their field staff, uh, which is probably what drove their number as high as it was. Mm -hmm. But based on hourly rates, this uh, 165 an hour is a very competitive rate for a for a structural engineer. So in addition to the the lowest first cost, it's a it's a very reasonable hourly rate. Um, I'll take a motion to approve it. Go move. Is there a second. Second. Um, can you stop sharing, Jack, so we can take the vote? Sure. All right. All in favor of approving fifteen thousand twenty six dollars. Two two forty six. 246 for Arcadis to retain the special inspector. Thumbs up. Matt dropped off. He was having technical issues, so I don't count him in for this one. Okay. Um, anyone objecting? Uh, no. And then we'll say Matt staying since he's not on. Okay. Um, anything else, Jack? Uh, did you want to consider an invoice or wait till next meeting? We, we should have several at that point. Let's just do a next meeting in that way. I can remember what I'm signing off on later. That's just fine. And Matt's coming back in. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to move the item um, seven ahead of item, or sorry, item 12 ahead of item 11 so that we would do comments, updates, and announcements from board members and admins now. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, give me a thumbs up. All opposed, thumbs down or something else? Okay, motion carries. All right, let's do, um, anyone have any comments, updates, anything they wanna bring up? Yes, Claudio. Um, I signed on a couple of minutes late. I just want to confirm. I had a conversation with um, Tom and Joe earlier today regarding the fence and the requirement of a letter um, from either the district or the town um, authorizing to vary or uh, yes, to vary from the specs that the state gave. Joe, you remember the conversation earlier today? Yes. Was that discussed at this meeting? Not yet. Okay. So what specs did the state give us? I, Joe? I, can, I, can, I can comment on that. Uh, <laughs> the, the remark came from our plan reviewer from the state uh, when I discussed the fact that we might be looking at some alternative fencing material. Uh, again, if it was going to become part of the base bid, uh, it would be captured in the addendum, you know, in, in the, the ultimate award. Uh, what their concern was, was that, you know, since this is a different methodology that they wanted something in letter form, just informing that this wasn't, you know, some done by some whim, but that there was some, uh, dis, you know, decision process behind it and just report it to them so they could add it to the plan review record that we were, you know, if in fact we do end up changing the material from the, four foot chain link that was the base design. So it's not about a um, meeting any kind of standard. It's more of them verifying that this committee approved the change. Correct. Gotcha. Right, but there there is the the, the school standards, the 7050 7, that indicates that a, a fence is required to prevent accidental student access. Right. right. So and that's it, what Jack talked to the state about, right, Jack? Right. And they acknowledge that, you know, they're not 
they're not requiring their standards don't require something like a six foot tall chain link fence in order to which is what we typically would would see for something that's meant to be access prevention you know nothing is access proof uh, but if if we're putting a fence up for security reasons it's usually a six foot fence there's nothing in their requirements that says we have to go to that extreme but again that accidental access is really the thrust so somebody's not going to just unknowingly wander in we're talking about the buyer retention area, right? Yes. Right. So for right. Stacy and other people who are in this conversation, we're not talking about access to the yeah. school site. Mm. Right. So the way I interpret that is accidental entry means that you're not just like falling into a pit. You're there's something there blocking you. And that something, as long as there's something there, it could be almost anything you want. Uh I believe so. You know, there there is no there is no hard and fast expectation. Right. Which makes sense because if you look at other schools around the state, they don't have six foot chain link fence around their buyer retention areas. They have the split rail. They have the timber rail. They'll have um, we've seen None. the ornamental fence. Nothing at all. Yeah, nothing at all. Which I think that's an extreme, but. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Shannon. Any other comments? Okay, if not, um, well, do we, Claudia, do you have what you need for the letter and who's taking the action? Um, I don't require the letter. I wanted to clarify that from my understanding when I spoke to Joe earlier today that this letter is required and I'm more concerned that if it is required and we do need it that someone is developing it it would come from the school building committee uh, from my understanding um, who's overseeing this project so I still haven't heard the answer to that question well, will the school building committee provide a letter the last time we talked about a letter Jack you said you were writing a letter we, I, I would draft it on behalf of the building committee, but it's Claudio. It's an if then arrangement. If we change from the four foot chain link that was on the drawings when the state reviewed it, then we would provide a letter indicating that the building committee authorized the change. So we're not going to make that decision until we get the bid alternate numbers in. Okay. I I think that answers my question. Uh, thank you, um, Rosanna that we're going to wait until we get the bids in to make a decision on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Hey, Rosanna, this is Stacy again. Yeah. Um, I, I know this isn't directly building committee related, but I wanted to take the opportunity to give a couple announcements as well from town council. I wasn't sure when sure. was the right time. Um, I, I post these announcements generally on Facebook to try to open up communications across town along with James and the other council members. Um, but mo most importantly in the announcements I made earlier this week was that there online right now is a drafted plan of conservation and development. It's a drafted plan. This plan is updated every 10 years. Um, they're in the final review stages of the plan now. Um, the council will be having um, a review session later in January. Um, it's open for public comment until January 20th. Um, in the past, this document, I think, has been drafted, thought about, and kind of put aside because we operate, you know, fairly fine-tuned business, you know, if you will. Um, however, I think it's the right opportunity, seeing this will be um, active for a 10-year active document that we all get familiar with it, seeing this should be a living document that guides our town and the conservation and development of our town going forward. So when you have some time, or if you can't sleep, please read the document. <laughs> I actually found it really interesting and I have 10 pages of comments to submit. So um, I feel really um, passionate about this, but um, please take the opportunity to review the document. And if you have questions, please reach out to the town offices or James or someone on town council. 
Is it on, on the, the website or do we? It is. Go? It okay. Yep, it's right under unused and announcements on the website. Okay. Um, and then also what we're going to be doing is using the, uh, I'm going to use the term emergency, but the, the citizens alert notification system um, more often to send out notices for townwide meetings um, in different forums, like tonight's mayor um, for, um, forum that he had a community forum. A reminder went out via text message and email for that. So if you have not signed up for these alerts, please sign up for them or encourage your neighbors and friends and everyone to do the same thing. I signed up for that. I did not get an alert. Oh, I got my first one. I was really excited today. I'm like, it worked, oh. but maybe not. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Excellent. And Thank that's you, all Steve. I really, I, that's all I had. I just wanted to make sure that um, those were probably the two most important things right now. We do have a meeting next Wednesday, which you'll be presenting at. We look forward to seeing your presentation. Um, and we'll go from that I've only had two meetings under my belt, so bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right, anything else anyone wants to bring up? Otherwise, um, I, do I need a motion to go into executive session? Or do we just go into executive? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay, I'll take a motion to go into executive session with the building committee. Um, Claudio's invited if he wants to attend and Joe Collada only. So moved. Is there a second? Yes, okay. All in favor, thumbs up. Question, Rosanna? Yes. Yeah. Uh, since so I'm your running, question? since I'm used since I'm running the Zoom, the Zoom meeting. Yes. <laughs> am I invited as well? Um, is there a way for you to leave and leave the Zoom running? I think if you if you leave, you can say don't leave for everyone else. Uh, just text me, it. just text me when it's done and uh, Hold Heather, on, you could uh, hand it over, Jack. Uh, Jack. Yeah, Heather is Heather is co-host, so maybe I can leave and and Heather can terminate the recording and close the meeting. Yes. No, no, we can't. I wonder if we could do a breakout room. Oh. Um. Tell you what, I'll go make myself a cup of coffee. Text me when you're done, and I'll shut off the recording. Yes. Okay. Rosanna, are you inviting me in? It's fine if you don't. Sorry. That's okay. I'm fine. Really? I'm more than happy to go do everything else I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'll cover the minutes and email them to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, let's do a quick vote to go into executive session. So just give me a thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. So we're in executive session as of. So is is, is Lisa is also excused? Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get on. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Dan and Tom, if you can hang up as well. Thank you. Good night, all. all right. Thank Have you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. That's that's away. Okay. Heather, right. if you're a co-host, I think you can uh, right-click on Dan's name. He just left. Oh, Looks he just like left. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So um, thank you, Joe, for sticking around for um, a little discussion. So we just want to provide some feedback because there was a lot of chaos that happened with this whole fence situation. And... Um, to put it bluntly, it put us in a kind of bad position with the town. And just to give you some feedback, and for Claudio's sake too, this is why I kind of value Claudio because um, he's new to the town and new to the politics in town. So it's really important that um, he hears this as well, is that um, the town will take any opportunity to, we're still recording. Don't stop the recording. Let me text check. Let me text check. If you can't do it, Heather, are you co hosting? Yeah, but it won't give me the option to stop. All right. Okay. Hmm. I don't want to continue on until it stops. So let me see if he's actually checking. Okay. 